Hey, coaches, I'm uh, fired up. We got a fantastic guest. Uh, Kenny Simpson is the head football coach at Searcy High School in Arkansas. He is a author. He is a wing tee guru and has a uh, pro prolific online uh, uh, presence. And, uh, and I'll tell you, I, uh, I went to your website the other day and punched in a big uh, order and then got sidetracked. And I haven't, I, it's in my basket, but I haven't done it yet. So I got to do that when we get off here. But coach, fantastic to have you, man. Excited about it. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, you, the things you do online and your Wednesday night stuff? And then uh, I know you're going to, going to teach us a play, a wing tee play. Yeah, man. I, I appreciate you having me on. I, I think it's pretty awesome. Guys like you were putting this stuff out. It's really inspired me to do a lot of the things that, that I'm doing. Um, and the intro was perfect, except for the guru part, man. I, I'm like every other coach. I took a lot of great things from a lot of great people. And then I learned through doing things wrong. And so hopefully what I can share a little tonight may help some, but uh, no, I've got a couple books out. Um, you know, you can get those on Amazon if they want and then go to my website. It's everything with me is FB coach Simpson. So that's my Twitter handle. That's my Gmail. That's my website, fbcoachsimpson.com. I try to keep things simple. You know, as I'm going through talking tonight about how we run belly, you'll see simple is how I process. And so I'm pretty good at uh, relating to 16 year old kids because we think about the same level. So anyway, uh, but I've got a couple books out. We're, I'm going to do some Wednesday night series type deals, trying to grow my YouTube channel. You know, uh, obviously coaches that do this, you know, you would like to make a little side money so that you can take care of your kids. But for me, the main thing is if I can help coaches. And so I'm trying to put free things out on YouTube and free things out on my website just to help kind of like what you're doing here. I think this is the way guys learn. And, and uh, I used to just do a lot of one-on-one -on -one and then I got real busy and, and I couldn't talk to everybody. And so this became the best way to do it. So anyway, really appreciate you having me on. I appreciate you being here. And I, I just, when you're talking, I, I'm remembering, uh, and we'll probably hit this. I'm going to have you on the podcast after this, but you, you took over a, a program and then COVID hit. Can you give us like a 30 second? How, how was that? How does that work out when you just coming in and boom, you get hit with this thing? It was tough. It was tough. I took the job in July in Searcy. Um, and we had graduated about everybody, you know, so it was basically, we were young anyway, and we had five weeks to play a game and we opened with the state semifinalists in seven, a, which is a class above us. So a lot of things stacked against us, but I thought our kids responded really, really well, um, made the playoffs and, and unfortunately got, got put out, but proud of our kids excited about not COVID because COVID foot is better than not getting to play. So I don't want to sound ungrateful but it kind of sucks. You know, I, I want to get back to normal and, and I know our kids do, but I was so proud of our kids. It was just a blessing to be able to do what I do. So I, I'm, I'm excited about it. Awesome. Well, we're getting ready to play in February. So we're, uh, oh, man. I, I was in favor of moving to the spring and now it's looking like everyone who played in the fall are geniuses because, you know, everything's spiking right now, but, but uh, just interested in how that works, you know, when you're coming in and you get, you know, waylaid with this thing, but uh, I know you're going to teach us belly tonight and, uh, and I'm excited to learn from you coach. Yeah, man, I, I appreciate it. And guys, I'm, I am uh, notorious for going uh, probably too fast at times. And so um, I'm like, my contact info is on here. Um, you know, I've got a lot of things, kind of a lot of irons in the fire right now. So I, I, I try my best to respond quickly as much as I can, probably the best way you can text me. Uh, or email me again. There's that FB Coach Simpson. Just kind of remember that, and you'll be able to find stuff. Coach mentioned I've got my website, so um, this presentation's on there, uh, guys. I've always believed in, you know, I've as a coach, I've bought things and I've had things given to me. And if you're in a position where you can't afford it, I'll give you whatever you want off my website. You go on there and you pick something, and I'll ship it to you whatever you want because you know I'm doing this to help people. But uh, I've got a bunch of stuff on there. Try to keep it pretty cheap. You know, I got to pay for Taco Bell for my little girl. She's, she's a Taco Bell guru. Anyway, uh, that's my Twitter handle as well, FB Coach Simpson. I try to put stuff out there free, uh, but I'm going to move kind of quickly through this. Coach mentioned it. Nobody here wants to hear a bio of me, but just so you know, I know a little bit. Um, I've coached a long time, and I've done well at times, and I've been 0-10. And, and so I've been through what you have probably been through. I've been Coach of the Year, 
uh, at 28 years old and thought I knew everything. And I've been the 33 year old who went 0 and 10 and thought no one wants to talk to me, maybe my wife and my dog, that's it. You know? And so I've been all over the place, but the main thing I want to kind of get across here is I've adapted what I've done to my kids. So I think a lot of people view me as a wing T guy, which is really funny because I didn't learn to wing T really until about 2015. And I learned it out of desperation because we, I mentioned it, we went 0 and 10, you do whatever you got to do to figure something out. And so went to Southside Batesville, they'd lost like 20 some odd games in a row. I helped contribute to some of that. Uh, and so I had to figure out what we're going to do. So we went to what we call the gun T, had some success with it. I was a Tony Franklin guy and had had success throwing it all over the field, 10 personnel, empty, love it. Okay. Didn't work for me at Southside, square peg, round hole, got to figure something out. And so we went to this offense, but I do think you guys that, Hey, we don't really want to go full scale shotgun wing T. That's fine. You know, we can call it 21 so you can keep your spread card and I can keep my wing T card and we're all the same because you watch Alabama, they ran some of the stuff we're going to talk about today, you know, and, and they can run it out of 10 personnel. So this stuff, I think that will apply. Had some success. I've already kind of mentioned, took a head coaching job in July during COVID, which is probably not the best decision of my life as far as timing. Short term, I think long term, I'm very excited to be at Cersei. I think it's a great place to be. But the first year, you know, with not much time, it's rough. So I'm really glad to be in the off season now. You guys that are in the middle of the season, feel free to reach out as well. Uh, and this, anyway, this comes from my offense. Uh, it doesn't have to. You don't have to run this exact offense to run the play we're going to talk about tonight. But if you want more information, feel free to come back and I'll give you whatever you want. So most people know me as Buck Sweep Guy. That's kind of, I get a lot of questions. A lot of people reach out to me with buck sweep, but you got to have a play to complement buck sweep. If you're in the shotgun, you know, if you're under center, you kind of run trap and run the down and run all that stuff. If you're wing T you have numbers and stuff behind them. If you're spread, you just have names, but we couldn't really do none of that stuff looked good for us in the gun. So we came up with a play that we call belly, but a real wing T real wing T guru came on here and said, that's not belly. That's basically ISO power, which is kind of what we're running but we needed a play that paired with Buck. We needed a play that would attack A gap, B gap, C gap. You know, on a whiteboard, it looks really good to write down this plays A gap, this plays B gap, this plays C gap. But the spread world that I kind of came from was like, you know, they run zone and that's kind of their, that can hit A gap, B gap, C gap. Well, I wanted that, but I wanted that with a gap scheme run. I got, we didn't have running backs that could run zone. That's why I went to the wing T, you know, and so, we needed a play that was a gap scheme run that would work with what we did. And I'm not, not, there's nothing wrong with running power, but it's really hard to run that in the set we're in. Like I didn't have that. I didn't want to give it away by moving my fullback inside my tight end. And now everyone knows, Oh, we're running power. So I wanted to be able to run something inside and power didn't really work with that. So we went with what we call belly. A lot of people probably call it ISO. We love it because it pairs so well with Buck. So a lot of the drills I'm going to talk about up front, we run a lot of the same type of drills with Buck. We also like it because it's a play that can hit A gap, B gap, or C gap, play to play, week to week, you know, depending on what you're running on defense. You know, we want to be physical and have a physical mindset, but there were a lot of times we were completely outmatched up front. And so we want to attack where you're not. And so to me, I thought this kind of gave us that flexibility. And this is basically, and by the way, uh, I'm learning technology. This used to be a drawing on paper I took a picture with, but the dudes over at uh, Pro Quick Draw helped me out a little bit, so I'm looking more professional. Anyway, here's the base rule. Our tight end, I I'm gonna start on the quick side. Actually, I gotta work with my guys. It's brand new and they drew it up wrong, which is probably my fault. Uh, our quick tackle is going to step hinge, gap hinge. Our quick guard right here is actually going to wrap. And I've got video, so we'll kind of look through it. He's going to wrap first thing that he can attack, okay? Our nose has number one. He's going to be on backside. That's his same rule on buck. So these three guys, center, quick guard, quick tackle, same rules as buck, makes it really easy. I love teaching plays where I can say it's the same as and go back to something that's easy to put in. 
Our strong guard is going to block the number one level one defender. Okay. And he's usually going to end up doubling to a linebacker, usually. All right. So in this case scenario, he counts from the center. There's number one from the center, first level defender. That's who he's blocking. Okay. I've got some other drawings where, you know, your traditional forefront, he may double a three technique or block out on a three. That's why it's a flexible play. Our strong tackle has the number two defensive lineman or first level defender. Unless the dude's in a nine technique. Okay, and I'll kind of go through. I think I've got a couple on here. Our tight ends rule is very easy. I block out. I block out. You know, they're going to have a force player. We run enough buck. He's probably going to be pretty close. You know, so they're going to have a force player in there. Block him out. Our wing is going to insert. And then our quick guard, I told you, is drawn up wrong here, is going to actually pull wrap. Okay. My theory on this was big guys block big guys and athletic guys block athletic guys. Because for me, this quick guard might be 180 pounds at the 6A level in Arkansas. That's not very big. But he's really good at blocking the second level because he's our guy who leads on buck. Well, he also leads on our belly. Our wing back right here is a wing back. So this is the guy that was like, I'm not quite the start running back, so we're going to stick you at wing back and you got to block. So he's already not real happy. So we're going to let him block a second level player on this. Okay. This is kind of a base rule on it. Okay, I'm going to come over to the fan because I think it's actually drawn up correctly here. And then we talk about being adaptable and adjustable. That's what I'm going to talk about in this is we want to have play side adjustments. You know, a lot of guys have heard me before talk RPO game and I could talk that for hours. I'm not going to hit that, but we have RPOs all on the backside. So we RPO any player from the center that direction. But for that to work, you got to be able to handle the play side. So we came up with a few different adjustments, and I've got some video I'm going to roll through and kind of show as well. But basically, most of our adjustments are going to involve our wing tight end because the reality is those are the, usually going to be your two weaker blockers. And if you're in 21 personnel, those are probably your two weakest blockers. So you better have built-in answers for those guys on we run buck and we run belly. So first one's pretty simple. You call fan, well, they both block out. Okay, so Usually that means this dude right here has been falling and making tackles, all right? And now we're going to both block out and we're going to wrap to play side. So fan just tells them that. If you'll notice up here, okay, different front, but it's all rule-based. So the first play hit in B gap. This play is going to hit, it can hit in A gap or it can hit in C gap, depending on how that double team works. I'm all about two way goes to the running backs. So on this one, we're gonna follow the guard. So same rule, we're gonna gap hinge at quick tackle. We have on backside, which is a backside one. Our quick guard, I'm sorry, strong guard, strong tackle, our strong guard is blocking number one defender on play side. That's this three technique. Strong tackle has number two, unless he's over here in a nine technique way outside. So he knows we're going to double to backside linebacker. Built-in rule, okay? We're going to block out. Fan tells our wing to block out also. Built-in rule. We don't have to do that. We would insert if we didn't call it. But the play can hit different gaps. And then we can run a little double team we call duo. Again, that's just talking to these guys. A lot of times we'll want a double team because a lot of teams will put their best player at a nine technique. And so now we're going to double that kid to get movement into the next level. This is what we're going for. So a couple of drills I'm going to show you, which pair real well with Buck, is what we want. We want we would like to have our uh, running back this close to our guard. That's the goal. And every run we run, we run Buck, we run Belly, we want that look. Because in my opinion, that guy for us is going to make that guy right. And that allows me to tell my guards, if you'll run full speed, the angle we teach you with your eyes where we teach you to go, even if you whiff, we're going to have a great play because our running back is going to make a great move. If you don't have them this close, you're going to have problems. I run the wing tee enough, your guard's going to run, your running back won't be close enough, and that guy will make the tackle. He'll fall in there and make the tackle. Okay, here's some of the drills we use. So drills for us, we put them in what we call pods. So that's a little different. Let me give you a real quick explanation. We take our guys to work buck, belly, counter, to work all of our stuff, and we put them with the group they're going to work with the most. 
So for example, um, we're working belly inside of our practice schedule. We'll do individual up front, well, a little five minute, what we call pod period. So our guards in pod for belly are gonna go working with our running backs, usually our quarterbacks. Our other linemen are gonna be working double teams, base blocks, whatever else they're doing. Generally, we'll put our Ys and our Bs together because they're gonna work on that block out and wrap or whatever other adjustment we have. And usually our receivers are working whatever RPO concept we're gonna pair with belly. Okay? The goal for us again is they hit downhill quickly. So this is basically the setup for us on belly. Okay, these are oversized hurdles. You know, we got a plumbing company to donate PVC pipe. I went out there and built these hurdles. I've done the same thing at Searcy. So we have different levels you can kind of see. These are four foot for stance. These are five foot, they're three foot wide. And we just use these, especially early on in the year to give our guards great angles on where to run through, it's good landmarks, okay? So this is what our belly pod would look like. Okay, one guard is blocking down on the double team, one guard is wrapping and then they'll rotate. I'll play it again because I know Zoom video not always the best, but see that gives that guard where he's going, okay? And you'll see our running back right here is gonna wrap really tight and try to get his hand on him. And you'll also notice ugly guy here with a farmer hat, that's me. I become the RPO read for our quarterback. So right here, we were probably running what we call steel. So I'm the read. I can move back and become a read, what we call peak. I can move somewhere else and be another read for him. That's our running back coach who's watching our running backs. And that's our second lineman coach who's all propped up on that hurdle there. He's working with our guards. Okay. The reason we like pods is if I didn't have this coach or this coach, because I'm coaching 2A or 1A or whatever level you might be coaching, I could run this drill with all these kids and we're getting effective drill time in. All right. Here it is without the hurdle. So later in the year, we're trying to move kind of quickly. Okay. We're not doing an RPO because I'm standing back behind him. And you see right here, all we're doing is the same deal working down block. Watch the running back does a great job here getting his hand on the guard. Guard's hands are inside, and then all we do is the guards will rotate. So this guard was blocking down, they'll rotate because we block belly this way. Well, we block quick belly the exact same way. It's the exact same rules, exact same way. So now we got two plays, same rules, and then our guards just rotate and get the timing in. While all this is going on again, our other linemen are down there working base block, double team, whatever else they might be working. Okay, so strong belly again. Kind of move through here. The goal for me on strong belly is this. We don't want to run into a wall, okay? I found that the old wing T ways, and there's nothing wrong with this because guys, you can win doing whatever system you can fit with your kids, that put numbers on things end up getting themselves in trouble. For example, like 34 lead. Okay, well, that's the three back, you know, through the four hole. Well, what happens if the defense puts a bunch of guys over there, like in that gap? Well, we're going to double and move them why don't we just block them out and create a gap and run underneath them? Well, you know, that's why we just call it a word where it's belly. And I mentioned it can hit a gap. It can hit B gap. It can hit C gap. We don't care. We don't care if you even get movement vertically, just turn them out and create a gap. Okay. So when you're watching a lot of this film, you'll notice some of this film, I have a really good O line and we tried to get as many double teams we could and light people up. And that was easy to call offense that year because our line averaged 280 and they come off the ball and smoke you. That's easy offense. But I want this play to work when they outweigh me and when my guys aren't as good as their guys and I can give them answers, okay? And then again, we're gonna read as many backside guys. Not gonna have time tonight to go into RPOs. I've got a bunch up there. They're on my YouTube, you can go look them up. I really wanted to focus on the base play because when you get the base play right, you can be as creative as you want. This is actually very much a spread run. We were running this in 10 personnel and kind of brought it over with us when we put in the wing T, the general formation of the wing T. So it's very much more of a power type play, okay, uh, that came out of a, a spread formation. So again, let's go through our base rules. Finally got some film here for you. So quick tackle is gap hinge. He's got that guy. Quick guard is going to wrap. He's gonna take first guy that shows up. We think it should be backside linebacker, all right? Center's on backside. 
quick uh, strong guard, strong tackle ought to be doubling here and then trying to work that way, blocking out, blocking in. Okay, so here you go. And we can attach RPOs or whatever else we want to run with it. There's your base play. And I'll kind of go through that running back makes me look very good. You know, the way I look at it is if my scheme can get him six yards on a safety, that was a good scheme. If he's a great player, we're going to have a great year. Okay. But here it is. And what I want you to notice is that's the line of scrimmage. We didn't move. We didn't really win or move anybody. Like we didn't double team and just smoke people and light them up. All we did was created a crease, created a crease. And there he is. That's all we wanted was to create a seam to get our guard through that seam or to get our wing through that seam or preferably both. And now our running back can go make a play. He's one-on-one with whatever DB you got back there. And he can try to make a play with it. All right. We can pair this with other things. This is a lot of times we'll pair this with an RPO or a real quick, quick game. I love belly because to me, there was a couple of years we didn't even have a quick protection. We ran this blocking and then we would call whatever quick game pass we wanted to run because you're pretty much gap sound in this. And by the time he gets upfield, the ball ought to be out. Okay, so you're not going to get caught on RPOs. Um, and so we would pair this a lot of times with screens and other things we wanted to do. Okay, here's an example of a better line okay, and getting a lot more movement. So same look at the front. This is just a different year, playing the same team, same alignment. Just my front was better. So we're creating double teams, actually getting some movement. You can kind of see there the RPO action going with it. Okay, difference was that running back couldn't go 70 like the other one could. But same blocking. Okay, we're just pairing this with whatever we want to run down here. And you can see how gap sound you are. You can also see the natural window we're creating. Let me kind of pause it here. Natural window, or that's a good throwing window. So if you want to throw slants, digs, ends, those are going to be available to you. All right. We can run out of overset. All we did here is brought our strong tackle over. We brought our receiver over, and now we're in kind of a, you know, we're in an unbalanced look. Okay, and watch what the defense did here. And they did a good job lining up. They got a guy in the C gap. They got a guy in the a gap, they got a guy in the B gap, they got a guy out here. But so we're not gonna be able to get double teams. But we're not asking for double teams. All we're asking is you create an alley. Okay, so I'll kind of pause this. You'll see all we're doing is blocking out and funneling everybody. I mean, these guys actually are getting upfield, they're getting penetration. We're just funneling everything out to create a gap, and our wing back and our guard lead up to the hole, and there we go, off to the races. Okay. Physically, did we win? And not really. You know, we won by taking advantage of how you lined up, allowing you to move out, and then we took advantage of that. It's a positional block, really. We would like to get movement, be physical. That's kind of who I am and want to be. But if we can't, all we have to do is do this. Just create an alley, and there goes our back. All right. I talked about fan call again. I want to kind of show this to show, um, you know, if you start making adjustments inside of a base play, that's going to create things you're going to have to work on. So like anything, it's kind of like a dam. You know, if you're plugging this hole, then it's going to spring water out of here. If you plug this hole, then it's going to, so all we're doing with adjustments or tags is we're plugging one hole, but we got to kind of be aware of what that's going to create. So if you decide, hey, we want to put this in, we want to call these adjustments, you kind of need to be aware of things that you're going to have to kind of fix down the road, right? So for us, one of our adjustments we'll call fan. Generally, we're going to do this because they're overloading us with multiple defenders, C gap, D gap. Those guys are in there and they're kind of coming in making plays. So that's our first answer. We're just going to go ahead and go attack those two guys. The problem with this is if you don't insert your wing, so here's your fan, you don't insert your wing, you lose one of your wrappers, one of your wrapping guys or your inserting guys. So if that dude right there is good and you don't get a great double team, it's going to be really hard to block him. I'll show you some film what I'm talking about. So we're running fan right here. We're having a hard time with this kid. We had a young tight end. So our adjustment was, all right, we'll fan block this. Okay. Run freeze. So we fan block it. 
There he is. We're fan blocking this. We're creating an alley, but here's your problem. That guy's unblocked. Okay, so if you decide, hey, we're going to run fan, understand you've got to do something to read this guy off the backside. And that's kind of where our RPO started. We feel you can run belly and not RPO it. Everybody's taken care of. Everybody's blocked. If you start messing with the rules a little bit, like we did here, now you're going to have to do some reading. So if you're a guy that, hey, I just want a real simple, easy play, just call, just call belly. If you want to start RPO and playing with it, you know, then you can start using these kind of adjustments. We started running switch. You know, I'm a big believer in easier, work smarter, okay? Not necessarily harder. We, we like to work both, but it works smarter for sure. All we're going to do here. We get these five techniques, these three front teams. You get a five, you get a wide nine, you get an athletic tight end. We're going to switch the Y and B's rule. So the B will block out, the Y will rack. All they're doing is switching responsibilities. That's why we call it switch. Okay. So the B is going to block out, the Y is going to rack. Nice, easy hole. Nice, easy play. So it's just having more tools in your tool belt by switching the responsibility. You see this a lot of times. In my world where it's buck sweep, where guys are running pin and pull, that's basically what we would call buck switch. We're switching the responsibility of who's pulling, okay? Just by taking advantage of how they line up. To me, for us, we run belly, and on a good year, that's our only inside run. That's it. Because we feel it adjusts so much to what the front will be. And I'm a guy that, hey, I'll run the ball for 400 yards if you'll let me. And this year, went back and looked at our stats at Searcy, new school. We ran puck. We did pretty well. Probably one of our best run plays was this. Okay. And so it was just something that complemented it very, very well. All right. A couple other things you can do to help yourself out. And this is just football one-on-one. So I'm going to move quickly through it and kind of wrap up here. But is using sets to get the numbers right. And so that's in anything. But it's something that we like to do a lot of times. So a couple different Kind of things that we'll do is we'll run an overset. I think I showed that already. We'll run a double overset. Um, you know, we get a lot of teams that want to play man. You know, double oversets against them don't look so good, but the teams that play zone, they do look real good in because they'll leave that corner on the backside and you'll get them outnumbered. Uh, so just kind of a tip there. If you're looking at running oversets and you run them against man teams, you're probably going to run back on the quick side. Okay. If you're running them against zone teams, you're probably going to run to the strong side. We like to go empty, run the ball our quarterback, or get a, gain a blocker. And we love to go trips. I love to go trips with a tight end away. So this is kind of an overset. I've already shown the play. But all we've done here is brought a tackle over. We didn't gain hardly any numbers, but we did bring – we traded out a 200-pound tight end for a 300-pound strong tackle. So we didn't gain numbers, but we gained weight. So that – in us, that's a good thing. All right. Here it is in double over. So what we'll do a lot of times here, there's tight end, wing, receiver, so it's kind of like quads, is we will run some RPO right here. So we'll run an RPO of these guys. So this set right here, we should have thrown that ball. Like we, we'll come back and run the same thing. Notice how he can't get the block, and we'll run this, a same side RPO. So we're going to run it here. This guy's going to play in here. We'll start throwing the ball out this direction. So he came in there and halfway tried to make a tackle. Right. If he doesn't, if he does make that tackle or he comes in, the next play we're going to come back to is some kind of screen out here and attach it to our belly. All right. We can run strong belly or with a quarterback. So we want to gain blockers. One way you gain it, run your quarterback. Now I've got three inserters. Okay. So if you're kind of a got a 220 pound quarterback like this one that wants to run the ball downhill. Okay, we're going to go strong belly with our quarterback, or what you call it, Q, all right? And now I've got an inserter here. I've got our B actually ran fan there, I think. So we actually were running fan. And then to take care of this guy, running insert, insert. So I gained my numbers. So it's just another way, okay, we want to run fan, but I need to gain numbers. Well, if you're willing to run your quarterback, you can gain your numbers, okay? We'll get insert, and there's your other insert. And they do a good job right there. Okay. The other way you can do it is out of empty. Okay. This set we run, one of the reasons we love uh, the gun T is because it makes teams line up differently to you. 
and empty with us really because of lots of problems. Okay, so we're going to run the same blocking, change nothing, new formation. Okay, and we can RPO it, we can get crazy with it if we want to, or we can just run straight up belly. That's all we did here is we went empty belly. We actually ran wildcat here because our quarterback, not much of a runner that year, this kid much more comfortable. So it's the same blocking, same rules. Don't mess with your kids, you're going to get double insert. There goes your quarterback, kind of a two way go. We didn't really even block that well. But with the numbers we created and the gaps we created, we just made the defense wrong, okay? Again, strong tackle. Real quick thing I want to leave you guys with because I think I'm about wrapped up here is we tell our strong tackle, you get a head up force, a question I get a lot. We don't care where you move them. Put them in the B gap, put them in the C gap. Don't let him win head up. So put them in any gap you want. We're not really looking for movement unless we're getting a double team. So we just want to make sure we take him like right here as an example, we would have been fine. He can take him C gap or B gap. He just got to turn him. So our guards and our running back know where to go. If he just shoved that kid B gap our wing would have hit C gap our running back would have hit C gap. That's fine with us. Again, it's an adjustable play that we can run against multiple fronts and, and feel like it's kind of a physical downhill run. You guys, this is my contact info. I didn't even get into the RPO part of this just for time's sake. If you are interested, I've got a bazillion RPO, different things you can go look through. And the beautiful thing about our RPOs is we will attach our RPO with buck and with belly. We started even running a little bit of inside zone. Don't take my wing T card from me. Okay. But we attach these same RPOs to all three plays. So it makes it so much cleaner for your quarterback. Anyway, that's my contact info. Reach out if you got any questions. Thanks for having me on, Coach. Hey, awesome job, Coach. Uh, you Now you can't hide from that guru tag because uh, oh. that's obviously a play that you know inside and out and uh, obviously have a lot of flexibility with it. So I sure appreciate you coming on and doing this, buddy. Oh, man, no problem. Thanks for having me.